Do you have any idea why your folks named you what they named you? Did you get stuck with a name? Or I have a, a cousin whose name is, uh, no. I, I have a, your great aunt named you? Well, a yeah, pretty name it is. They were going to call me Esperanza. I can't even say it. I'm glad I was a boy. I think it means hope, doesn't it? It's, it's a pretty name, but uh, I kind of I kind of prefer the name I have. Um, some names are better than others, I guess. Uh, watch this video here. These are ten names that have been banned in certain countries. They're illegal in some countries. Number ten, baby name. Tallulah does the hula from Hawaii. That was a legal name. And in New Zealand, they said, you can't do that. That's against the law. Name number nine. Baby name, Devil. Somebody named their kid Devil. I mean, before they were born. Number eight. Baby name, Smelly Head. I like that one, Smelly Head. Banned in Malaysia. Illegal banned baby name, number seven. Baby name, Bridge. Bridge. Banned in Norway. I don't know why. Maybe it's a bad word. Baby name, Saddam Hussein. Nice. Nice. Okay, banned in Brazil. Number five. Baby name, At. The baby formerly known as At. Number four. <laughs> baby name, Tom. Why this is illegal in Portugal, but it was banned, Tom. Huh? Number three, baby name, 007, baby, banned in Malaysia. <laughs> Number two, baby name, Stallion, banned in New Zealand. And then the top 10 band name, illegal, Baby name, I can't even pronounce it. They just strung a bunch of letters together and they literally named that on the certificate they banned in Sweden. Now, I don't know where you got your name. Uh, my name means something, everybody's name means something. Me llamo Jose Antonio Chavez. They tell me that's Spanish. That's me, Jose Antonio Chavez. Soy el nieto de Jose Lucero. That's my grandpa. That's my mom's dad, Jose Maria Lucero. Soy nieto de Antonio Chavez. That's my other grandpa. That's my dad's dad, Antonio Chavez. Jose Lucero, Antonio Chavez. I have the name Jose Antonio Chavez. So I was named for, yeah, it looks like, right? Now, Jose, if you ever, you ever, you know, naming babies, you know, people, they go to baby books and, and they go online, ooh, what, is, what does this name mean? And, ooh, what does that name mean? And when you read the meaning of names in the baby books, they all sound so inspirational and inspiring. I think they lie. But anyway, Jose, Joseph, Bible name, it means God has raised. God will increase. Pretty cool, huh? Antonio means praiseworthy, priceless. Aww. I think they made all that stuff up. The truth of the matter is, you want to know what my name really means? It means that my mom and dad loved their mom and dad. Drum roll. There you go. No. I didn't have long hair in high school. I know. I know. Yeah. Jose means, nah. Antonio means, nah. Mom and dad loved their mom and dad, and they gave me a grandpa's name, and they gave me another grandpa's name, really. Do your names really mean anything? Now, the names they gave you when you were a baby, I mean, that was kind of early to know your personality and who you were going to be, and, you know, are you going to be a smelly head, or, you know. Maybe after a while, they could kind of figure that out. You know, we get nicknames. Sometimes they're not very complimentary, right? Nicknames say a lot about us. God's names tell us a lot about Him. God's name is revealing. Huh? He's the Christ. He's the King. He's the High One. He's God. He's Lord. He's Ruler. He's Shepherd. He's the Son. He's the Amen. He's the Faithful One. He's the Righteous One. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 and on. John says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and he wages war. This is the Lord. 
the one that we always see the pictures of, you know, the Polaroids holding a little sheep and throwing peace signs and, you know, little blue eyes, little nose. When Jesus comes again, he's coming to wage war, the Bible says. He's coming as a mighty one. He's not coming as the peaceful one. He's not coming as the lamb. He's coming as the lion. John says, I saw heaven standing open. There before me was a white horse whose rider is called uh, faithful and true with justice he judges and wages war 12 his eyes are like blazing fire on his head are many crowns and he has a name on him that no one knows but he himself what, what is that name what does that say nobody knows there's another name 13 he's dressed in a robe that's dipped in blood and his name is the word of god 14 the armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses i think that's us I'm not really excited about that part, coming back on a horse. I guess it'll be okay. They were fun until I realized if I get into a fight with the horse, I'm going to lose. Anyway, We're coming back on white horses, the Bible says, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. That means we're saved. It means we're righteous, sinless. 15, coming out of the Lord's mouth is a sharp sword that he uses to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter with a rod. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. 16, on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the mighty one. His name is revealing. God's names mean something. Now, how many names does God give us in, in the word? The one, two, three, hundred, like a gazillion. Uh, it seems like every time we turn around, the Lord reveals himself by giving us another name. He is, again, the righteous witness. He is the mighty one. He's El Elyon. He's El Shaddai. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah Sid Kinyu, Jehovah uh, Rapha. Uh, he's Jesus. He's the son of David. He's the son of Jesse. He's Lord Savior. He's Jesus Christ. Uh, his name, of, of, of all the things that his name reveals... My name reveals that my mom and dad love their mom and dad. Of all the names that God gives us, they all have meanings, but they really underscore the fact that he is the one and only true God. But in this passage, his name reveals a, a mystery. Uh, look again at verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and he makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire on his head are many crowns. Those crowns uh, are diadem. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of Lords. That word crown is diadem. That's not the same as uh, Lauren or Lara or Steve, Stephen, Stephanos, Laurel. All of those names mean crown. The kind of crown that... Uh, uh, those who were victorious in the Olympiad, in the Olympic Games, when they win, they receive a crown. Today they get a medal, right? But back when the uh, uh, Olympiad, when the Olympics were, were started, they would compete for a prize, and the prize was a Stephen, a Stefan, a Stephanos, a Laura, a Laurel, a Lauren. All of those words mean crown. It was made of, uh, it was a wreath, right? Beautiful. And it meant something. It meant you're victorious. You're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the victorious one. You're the, you're the one. But the crown on the Lord's head when he comes back is not a Stephen, not a Stephanos, not a Laura, Lauren, Laurel. It's a diadem. That's a crown of royalty. That's a crown that's given because of who you are, not because of what you've done. Bring forth the royal diadem. On his head are many crowns. And he has a name written on him that he himself knows. Uh, we know Jesus, we know Lord, we know Savior, we know Jehovah, we know I am. We... He's coming with another name that nobody knows. Now, I don't know if he's going to reveal that name to us. Uh, I don't know if we're supposed to try to guess, ooh, what's that name? We don't know. It's a name that only he himself knows. It's a mysterious name. How unfathomable, is that a word? Did I say it right? How unfathomable, unfathomable. Say that five times real fast. How ununderstandable. I know that's not a word, so I can use that one. How hard to understand is God. 
I mean, can we understand God? We try to figure him out. I try to figure God out with my theology, right? Can you put God in a box, in a shoe box, in a temple? God, God doesn't fit in a box. God doesn't fit in my theology. He doesn't fit in a church. God doesn't fit in a temple. God is the majestic one. He's the high one. He's the holy one. He's the one who made you. He's the one who picked you. He's bigger than you. He's bigger than us. He's bigger than his creation. He is the mighty one. And he has a name above all names. And one of those names he just hasn't revealed. His ways are above our ways. They're above us like the heavens are high above us. Yeah, I can't, can't understand him. Um, he's the God man, a little bit of a mystery. 50% uh, man, 50% God. Is that how that works? 100% God. 100% man? Yeah. Does that add up? No, but that's what he says. He's the mysterious one. He's the God man. This world uses his name uh, unrighteously as a cuss word, a curse word, as a swear word. Uh, when you get into trouble, do you ever call on the Lord? I don't mean big old, oh Lord. I mean when you're, uh, and you can only get out a few syllables. You know, like when I get mad, my favorite cuss word is, oh, that one. That's what I say. Oh. Hit my thumb. The other, I've been, I don't know, I got a splinter or something a couple of weeks ago. And it just, I can't find it. I don't know what it is. And it, oh, it gets better and it gets, ah, my thumb just hurts so bad. And Lauren's been doctoring it and it's just getting better and better. And at Friday, we had first Friday, kids come over to the house. And about noon, one o'clock, I had to get up on the gym one more time to fix one more air conditioner again. And I was putting the side in. And I felt the thing go, Whoa, and I thought, that doesn't feel right. And then I thought, ooh, that doesn't feel right. And then I heard somebody go, ooh, that was me. And that thumb that was getting better somehow got in between. It doesn't really matter. But owie, owie, yeah. I know, you feel bad? I don't know why I told you that story. but When you get into a tight, when you think you're about to wreck the car, when you think something bad is about to happen, do you call on the Lord? Uh, what do you say? Uh, Jesus? Uh, I, 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 thinking back, I, I, I can remember hearing myself, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Um, do you say Lord? God? Um, I, I, I get sad for, not you guys, but y'all, people in this church, I get sad when I hear them use the Lord's name in vain. And they don't realize they're doing it. Oh my G, they say. You know, but they say God? Oh my God. And they just say it. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. Or they just say, gee. You know, they just say, well, they say God. But they say it like, gee. Oh, my gee. Like it's nothing. He's the righteous one. But when you pray, what do you pray? Uh, you know, Lauren's a pilot. Uh, we, we both started together. She got a little ahead of me. She actually flies. I just have stories. But uh, on, on my first solo flight, uh, you're in the plane, you're doing everything they taught you to do over and over and over and over, and we're just going to, we're going to take off, we, and the instructor, we take off, we make a little rectangle, and we land, take off, make a little rectangle, we've been training, 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 and then he gets out of the plane, wait, I'm not ready, wait, wait, and he gets out of the plane, and so on your solo, you do three, take off, and land, take off, land, take off, and land. He got out of the plane. I had done this. I, I'm, I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. He got out of the plane. I didn't got this. <laughs> I was safe. Everything was fine. I got off the ground, and I remember I kept saying, your numbers, Tony. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I remember I just, that was my prayer. God, help me remember the numbers. Uh, I wanted to remember my speeds. wanted to remember the altitudes. wanted to remember where to make my turns. wanted to remember where to come in. Don't let my speed, uh, Lord, my, the numbers, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I remember a lot. Lauren, I think she sang. She's saying, when I call on Jesus, <laughs> when I call on Jesus. So I don't know if you've ever heard her sing. She's great. She says she doesn't sing. She sang all the way on her first solo. I don't know what you do when you're in a tight. I hope you call on the name of the Lord. I hope when you hit your thumb, you don't use the Lord's name in vain. I hope you teach little ones and older ones around you that you revere the mysterious one. He's not just your buddy. He's your savior. He's the great God. He is 
the I am. Well, his name reveals a mystery. His name also reveals a ministry. 13, he is dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Um, he's the Logos, the Bible says, the Logos, the Logos. Logos means word. But it's more than word. It, it's what the word conveys. So if I say cute, you think generically not ugly. But if you personify cute, you think me. Okay, maybe not. But you get the idea. It's more than just the word. It's what the word conveys. It's what the word means. It's not little scratches on a piece of paper. That word conveys meaning. Jesus isn't just a J-E-S-U-S. -S. His name conveys. Jesus means uh, it's Joshua. Uh, it means deliverer. It, it's Jesse. It means savior. It means the one who sets free. That's what, that's what Jesus means. It means savior. When Moses was about to go before the king of Egypt, he asked God, who shall I say sent me? And God said, just tell him that I am sent you. Now, don't you know Moses said, well, amen, I'll go say that I am. Did that make any sense to Moses? Probably didn't make any sense to him either. What does that mean, I am? God continually reveals himself in a way that just shows us just a little bit more. 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 His names convey ministry. He is the word of God. Everything God the Father has done, God the Holy Spirit has done, God the Son has done, the Bible says he brought about by his own word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, and the Lord said, and God said. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John says we saw him, and we touched him, and we smelled him. I wonder what Jesus smelled like. I bet he smelled like a dude. I don't think people walked up and said, can I smell you? Like the video that we showed a couple of weeks ago. I don't think, oh, you smell like heaven. Oh, 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 could I have some of your sweat? And, uh, I bet he smelled like a dude, you know? What he did, he was a man. He worked. I bet he didn't smell great all the time. He was just man but he was God and John said this mysterious one this this minister this God man dwelt among us the word the logos the the the, the idea of God uh, Paul said to the church in Galatia he's the logos of God he's the word of God he's the idea of God he's the express image of God with my signet ring, with my signature ring, with the ring that has my inscription, and you pour the melting wax on the page, and you, with your signet ring, you make the imprint. You leave your, the image, the imprint of your signet ring, you leave your signature. Paul said to the church at Colossae, Jesus Christ is the signature of God. If you could see the invisible God, he would look like Jesus. You ever watched old movies of the invisible man? Somebody's fighting with the invisible man, so they throw flour on him or throw paint on him or throw a bed sheet on him or something so that you can see the invisible. Jesus was God made flesh. And the Bible says everything he did conveyed God's heart, God's word, God's desire, God's will. He became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the word of God. Everything Jesus has done, he's done through his word. He is the word of God. His name conveys mystery. His name conveys ministry. His word, his name conveys majesty. 14, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He comes back with us, the Bible says. This is after the rapture. This is after the tribulation. This is after Israel calls on the name of the Lord. As a nation, they turn to their deliverer, their Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he comes back and we come back with him. Jude says 
that he sees the Lord in, in a vision. Jude says, I see the Lord coming down from heaven with ten thousands upon ten thousands of his saints. Literally myriad, uh, uh, thousands upon thousands. It doesn't mean, let's see, a thousand times one thousand. Let's see, carry my... Uh, Oh, where's my calculator? It's not 10,000 times 10,000. It means thousands times 10,000 times 10,000. He comes back with us. The majestic one comes back. And he will rule the nations with an iron scepter, with a rod. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. When he comes back, he'll be a fearful one. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, when Jesus Christ comes back, when Jesus Christ comes back, no more lawlessness, no more idolatry, no more child abuse, no more sexual sin, heterosexual, homosexual, no more standing in defiance against the law of the land because Jesus Christ will rule over sinners during that time. He'll rule over saints, but many of the people who begin the kingdom will be saved sinners just like we are right now in fleshly, earthly bodies. They'll walk in still with a sin nature, delivered, saved, justified. He'll rule over them with a rod of iron and justice will be met, meted out Swiftly, justice will be delivered immediately. Well, can I appeal this? No. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I do a jury instead of just the judge? No. You stand against the law, you'll be broken by the law. He'll rule with a rod of iron. His name reveals majesty. Everything bad will be over. For a thousand years, there'll be peace. It'll be the Garden of Eden on the earth again. Satan will be chained up for a thousand years, and after that thousand years, he'll be released. Makes no sense to me, but that's what the Bible says. Once Satan is released, he'll lead the unnumbered masses of sinners who've not turned to the Lord and trusted him as Lord and as Savior. He'll deceive the nations, and at that point, Jesus Christ will say, that's enough. Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire. All sinners who follow Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. People who have died without Christ will be brought out of hell, which is kind of like jail. They'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ, which is judgment, uh, the, 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 the penalty, the, uh, the ruling. What do you call it when the judge makes the, the sentencing? There you go. And they come out of jail, and they're sentenced, and then they go into prison, which is the lake of fire that burns forever and ever, the second death. Jesus Christ will end all sin forever at that point. Satan's rule will end. All sin will end. All self-will will end with the majestic one. His name reveals his mystery. He had a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. Jesus doesn't reveal everything about himself, does he? We don't know everything about him. He doesn't want us to get too chummy with him. His name reveals his ministry. He's the word of God. He doesn't reveal everything, but what he does reveal, he reveals in his word. So you know me, I keep warning you. Careful about voices, literally. Don't, don't be looking for voices. Don't be listening for voices. Don't be, don't be praying for impressions from the Lord. Oh, God, lead me. I pray that. Oh, God, show me. I pray that. Uh, I've told you, I'm kind of dense. I, I'm, not, I'm not real sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting. You know, I'm kind of open door, closed door. You know, the mouse looking for the cheese. Oh, not there. Oh, not there. Oh, not there. It works for me. If God speaks to you, cool, but be careful. I've never known of one exception. Okay, maybe one. Of people who've told me that God has spoken to them were in other conversations. I bet they can't tell the difference between their own voice and the Lord's voice. If they can, great. But most of the time, 
rarely do they follow the Lord into something they don't want to do. I know that sounds pretty judgmental, but that's what I do. Follow God's word. He doesn't reveal everything about himself, but what he reveals, he reveals in his word. You don't have to go hunting around beyond this. What if it's the Lord? It's not. What if he hears me right now? Good, good for him. He should be in church. Uh, his name reveals his ministry. He's the word of God, and his name reveals uh, his majesty. King of kings, Lord of lords, he is coming again. This time when he comes, he's not coming to be nailed to a cross, but he's coming with a crown, not as a suffering servant, but as a sovereign savior, not as one to be pitied, but one to be feared. He's coming back with power. He's not coming to bless us with his favor. He's coming to judge with his fury. And we want to be on the right side of that judgment. The only way to be on the right side of that judgment is to be what? Righteous. You have to be sinless. You have to be perfect. And the only way to get there is to trust him. We serve a mighty God. Psalm 135 verse 1. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him. You servants of the Lord. He even left me a message. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name for that is pleasant. Verse 5, I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is greater than all other gods. Verse 6, the Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and in all their depths. 7, he makes the clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain. He brings out the wind from his storehouses. Your name, Lord, endures forever through all generations we serve a mighty God he does whatever he chooses he's sovereign he's strong he is the Lord we serve a mighty God we serve a forgiving God Romans 10 the word is near you isn't it salvation is right there isn't it it's knocking on your heart's door isn't it the word is near you it is in your mouth and in your heart if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God actually raised him from the dead, you can be, you will be saved. Ten, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in the Lord will never be put to shame. Twelve, there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Thirteen. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God said it through Joel. God said it through Paul. Oh, my stars. Be gentle. I don't know who that is. Don't turn your phone off. It might be an important call. Evidently, that might not have been. Um, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess faith. How do you get saved? In your heart? Do you have to say words to get saved? No, you don't have to say words to get saved. You believe in your heart, but with your mouth, you make profession of that faith. The promise is everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who just says Jesus, calling on the name of the Lord is to place your faith in him, your trust in him. One of the stools that we sit on is missing a leg, a support. I think Hannah took it out so I'd fall and be embarrassed. She didn't say she did, but she didn't deny it when I gave her the chance to deny it. Anyway, with stools like that, I sit and I keep one foot on the ground. Why would I do that? We're on this one. Oh, I put both of my little patitas up and I'll swing them. I, I trust it. When you call on the name of the Lord, but you've got one foot on the ground, you know, you keep your, your I'm going to be religious too. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try not to do bad things. And that's good. Don't Try not to do bad things. Try to do good things. But it's not about Jesus plus what you're going to do. It's not what you bring to the table, what you bring to the equation. You bring nothing but sin. You bring nothing but judgment upon you. huh? But when you actually lean on him, you actually trust him, you actually trust him, you put the full weight of your sin and your future on him, you're calling on the name of the Lord and you can be saved. How do I know if you're saved? Well, I know because you'll tell people. You won't necessarily go through a blue book. We have the blue books because we tend to make the simple gospel so difficult. But it's simple. 
Jesus is God, you're a sinner. He died on the cross for your sins. He paid the price so that you can come from your side of sin to his side of salvation, walking across that bridge that he built with the cross, with his sacrifice. Come across. Give your life to him. Be saved. Be saved. Be saved. How do I know that you're saved? You won't be embarrassed to tell me. Now, after I gave my life to the Lord, I have to tell you, I was a little embarrassed. I, got, I, I prayed the prayer on a Sunday morning at Berean Baptist Church in the fall of 1973. Sunday morning. I prayed. There were about 22 of us who came forward to get saved that morning. Uh, I remember uh, I thought it was over and I could get out of there. And the preacher had to stand at the front and said, Now, y'all come after the last song and give these new believers the right hand of Christian fellowship. And I didn't know what the right hand of Christian fellowship was. I was a little scared. But... They all came up and they shook our hands and they gave us a hug and said, Hey, I'm glad you gave your life to the Lord. Good to have you in the family. Glad you got saved. I was a little embarrassed. The next morning I went to work and I worked with a guy that I, I thought he was, just, he was just it. He was like 22, 23 years old. He had his own sports car. He was a pilot. He flew. He was an artist. He was a musician. He was just, you know, kind of cool. I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. I mean, I didn't like, kind of cool, not like that, but I thought that's kind of neat. It's kind of neat to, to, to be so young and to be that together, you know? And I remember we used to make fun of the guy who used to preach to me, Carl. Well, I got saved the day before. Now I'm like Carl. And now we're, Bo and I used to make fun of Carl. It's just a matter of time before Bo starts making fun of me. But maybe he doesn't have to find out. And we're sitting in the truck together on the way to the job. This is back in the day when we painted billboards on location. So we're on our way to the site. And my heart started pounding. Because I knew I had to tell him. I wanted to tell him. But I was so embarrassed. I was so afraid to tell him. He was cool. I mean, what was I? 18-year-old little hippie kid, you know, just starting out there. We finally got to the job site, and I still hadn't told him, and I thought my heart was going to pop out of my chest and skitter across the floor. And just, and just before we got out of the truck, I said, you'll never guess what I did yesterday. And he turned, and he looked at me, and he shook his head because he knew. He said, you didn't. You went to church with Carl. You got saved. You didn't. Wow, I really thought more of you, he said. In a couple of weeks, we were working on a billboard, uh, Big Eye, and the billboard, it was about 40 feet to the deck, and then the billboard was 20 feet high. So 60 feet to the top, 20, 40 feet to the deck. And we're working on the billboard together. This is before OSHA made us start wearing hard hats and safety belts, and I was talking to Bo. He had, you know, he was being all that. I said, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. And he started mocking the Lord, and I remember... I'm sure it was in the spirit. I said, dude, you will bow your knee to Jesus Christ now or in hell, but you will bow your knee to Jesus Christ. And I remember the look on his face. I thought, I am going to heaven right now. <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to throw me 40 feet from that deck down to my glorious entrance into heaven. He didn't. But I was ready. I didn't want to go right then. I don't know that Bo ever got saved. He got sick, I heard later, got cancer. And I, I, I don't know. But I know that if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You ought to be able to tell people. It may be difficult at first. Figure out ways to tell them. Tell them, blue book them. That's why we use the blue books. Just give them a blue book and run. Just tell them, tell them. But once you get saved, you ought to be able to stand for God. Get saved, get soaked. That's the first obvious step of obedience. And I don't care how spiritual we look. I don't care how we are. You give your life to Jesus, but you won't be baptized. I don't believe it. I just don't. Who am I to judge? Somebody who reads the Bible. Follow him. Get saved, get soaked. We'll be baptizing again in September. We'll start again. We generally baptize the second week of the month. In September, the second week, we'll start baptizing again. If you've given your life to the Lord, but you haven't been baptized yet, you plan on it. Start planning on it now. I need a blue book from you, and I'll need the blue tearaway from the program. And then you come talk to me.
and we'll, we'll, we'll plan on it. You need to get saved, you need to get soaked, and you need to get serious about living for Jesus. You serve a mighty God. He's revealed himself, and through his names, we know he's mystery. He's all about ministry. Don't lose sight of that. You can't get saved and just sit and soak. You'll sour. You need to be involved. You need to be serving. Not like the Dead Sea. Water flows in, no water flows out. You be like a river of living water. God's spirit flows through you and service comes out of you, man. You love God and you just love people. God blesses you. You bless other people. Let ministry flow through you. Get saved, get soaked, get serious. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Lord Jesus, we call on you for salvation, for sanctification. God, for whatever satisfaction we find in this life, I pray that we'd find it in you, not in this life, not in this world, not in getting my way, not in getting what I want, not in getting my will, but your will. Lord, you are the mighty one. You're the majestic one. We love you. We trust you. We are so grateful you have revealed yourself through many, many, many names. Lord, we pray that we would know you more and more as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Hang around for a while if you can. When he comes down from